Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the second video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering building our first level and adding textures to make it look a little cooler than what it currently does. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help me a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, so far we have this big cube in the centre of our scene, which doesn't really look like anything at the moment, but we can use textures to create materials which can make objects look better than what they do. And as this is actually our floor, let's import some textures to make this a floor. Then let's create a ceiling, and then let's create some walls to box ourselves in. So let's keep everything neat and tidy inside our development window. We don't just want textures in this folder and this folder and that folder and just a mess everywhere. Keeping things neat and tidy in your engine is ideal because it helps you find things a little later on in development. So what we need to do is make sure we're in our assets window right here. Right click, go to create and select folder. And this folder will be called textures. Easy. And if we go into that folder, we now need to import some textures into Unity. And if I go to my folder here, I'm going to select these three textures, and then I'm going to drag and drop them into this folder, and Unity will import them straight into the engine. Now, if you want to get these textures, head to the pinned comment or the link in the description, click it, and you can go and download these textures completely free. It will cost you nothing at all. So once you've got them in Unity, make sure you have unzipped them from that file first because you cannot import into Unity from a zipped file. Make sure they are just in a normal folder. Drag and drop them in. Now we need to look at how we're going to get these textures onto this particular object. So what if we just drag and drop the texture onto this object? Will it work? Yes, of course. Drag and drop. And there we go. Look how cool that looks already. This looks like a floor. But it looks a bit flat, it looks a bit plain, it looks a bit boring. Let's modify this to actually make it look a little better. Now, if you've dragged and dropped onto this object here, you'll notice that this folder has now automatically been created. This is your materials folder. And you can see it's created this asset here, which is a material. And we can modify this in many, many different ways to make whatever texture is on it look different and it's up to you how you want to play with it. So let's go through some of the options of what we can do to this material. But first, let's make it look a little bit more 3D rather than flat and plain. Now in order to do that, we do need to go back to our textures. We need to click on tile 001, hold control on your keyboard and press D. It will create a duplicate of it. And what I like to do is I like to rename it with an underscore and N afterwards. The reason why I use underscore n is because this is going to be a different type of texture. We're going to change it inside Unity. We need to go over here and change the texture type to normal map. Hence why it's underscore n. It's short for normal map. And if we click on create from grayscale as well, you'll get plenty of options here. There is a lot to go through, but for all intents and purposes, we don't need to go through a lot of these, at least not yet. We just need to make our texture look a bit cooler. So if we now click on apply, this will change to like a bluey purpley color. The reason for this is because it's reading the texture differently than just being an image. It's reading kind of height, if you will, from it. It's not necessarily a height map, but it is taking some kind of information that you can then feed into a material to make it look a bit different. So now if we go to our materials, click on tile 001, this little ball icon here, and then head back to textures, and then drag and drop this normal map onto this little square here, the normal map. Drag and drop. Didn't want to do that, did it? There we go, let's try it again. Give it a second, and it will apply that information to our texture. And now you can see that it does look a bit different. It looks a little bit more, well, like a tile, I guess. But it's big and it's bulky, and you know, if we walked around on that, the tiles look huge. 
let's shrink those tiles a little bit more. How can we do that? Well, if we stick to our material here, I am actually going to delete that one there because when I dragged and dropped for some reason, my mouth decided it was going to let go on here and it's automatically created that material. You probably won't have this. You should just have this here. So make sure we are on here and then we can play around with some of these options. You've got surface options here and surface inputs. These are what manipulate the material to make it look different. For example, if we change the normal map to 10, you'll see it looks quite different. But again, it's too big. Let's tile this a little more. What happens if we change this tiling section to four by four? We've basically created the ability to duplicate the tiles all on one single object. So now it looks a bit more like a floor. And if we go to our game view, you can see that that is obviously very evident. It does look better. We could change how this looks up here as well. If we click on metallic and change it to specular, give it a second. Once it decides it's going to load everything in. And again, you can change all of these different aspects. You can change the smoothness and you should be able to see some very slight subtle differences happening. Uh, again, you can change it back to metallic. It just depends how you want it to look. You can slide the metallic up to give it a slightly shinier look, and then you can work with the smoothness depending on how you want it to look once again. So what I would recommend doing at this point, before going any further, pause this tutorial and work with some of these options until you are happy with how your game looks. Don't do exactly what I do. Make it your own, make it feel like it's your own, and then we can move on to the next section. Are we happy with what we've got? Excellent. Let's now do something to create a ceiling. And here's something real quick, easy, simple. Let's take the floor, hold control, press D, and then still holding control, left click on the button on the green arrow and drag it upwards to about there. It'll say over here, Y8. So we've moved it eight high. So if we go on game view now, you can see there's our ceiling. So let's rename this to ceiling. Awesome. And now what we can do is if we go back to our textures, we can drag and drop ceiling onto there, like so. And do we want to make that different in the terms of tiling? Well, again, that's up to you. Do we need to have a normal map? Again, that's up to you. I'm going to create a normal map and it's real quick once you know what you're doing. So hold control, press D to duplicate, F2, rename, underscore N, change it over here, go to normal map, create from grayscale, click apply, go to materials, click on your ceiling, and then drag and drop onto the normal map. Boom, quick, done. Once you get used to the kind of things you'll be doing in Unity, it won't take five minutes to suddenly create a normal map and apply it to a material. We did that in 15 seconds. It's as quick as that. And this is the beauty of learning Unity at your own pace and doing things that you want to do. You'll learn various different ways of creating things like this. Now, if we look at the ceiling, it just looks a bit strange. So what can we do with this? Well, what we could theoretically do is change here on the surface inputs, change it to albedo alpha, and then let's change the normal map to 0 0.2. Give it a second just to load in, and there we go. It looks a little better now. It doesn't look like it's white and fuzzy. It looks like what we would probably see on a ceiling. And I think that looks okay. So we've got a ceiling and we've got a floor in place. How do we create some walls? Should we do some walls? Sure, why not? How do we create walls? Well, here's something really cool we're going to do. I am going to use the ground, which is the floor, as half of the wall. And then I'm going to create this wall zero one as the second half of the wall. And again, we can duplicate things and do it quickly rather than have to create new game objects all the time. So let's go on floor, let's hold control, press D, and let's change the size. Let's have this as four on the Y, and let's have it as one on the Z. And we've just created the bottom half of our wall. Perfect. And it's up to you how you want this to look realistically. You know, you could intersect these if you wanted to, make it look like that. 
Um, but realistically, it's all about how you manipulate the materials. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go to our materials. Let's go on tile 001, hold control, press D, and rename it to tile 002. We've now got a completely independent tile material than we did with the floor. And what that means is that we can change the tiling right here. So rather than have it as four by four, so if we look at the size of this, it's 20 by 20. This is now 20 by four. Should we have it as five, maybe? Have something like that. So on tile 002, if we change this to tiling as um, one on the Y, four on the X, and then drag and drop, it looks a bit more normalized, you could say. It looks a bit more as you would expect. And what it comes down to mostly, I would say, is playing around with your materials, moving around in your scene, and making sure that things actually look as you would want them to be. So this is the bottom half of our wall. How do we create the top half? Well, why don't we just use the ceiling material? Let's hold control, press D on ceiling. Let's change it to say uh, wall 001. And rather than drag and drop the material, uh, sorry, the texture onto the object, why don't we drag and drop the texture straight onto the material? So let's go make sure we are on wall here. Go to your textures, drag and drop wall onto there. And then let's take the floor 001. Let's change this over here, rename it to wall underscore low. Hold control, press D, drag it upwards like so. Let's rename that to wall underscore high and then drag and drop our material of wall 001 onto that top section. What we need to do as well though is we need to change how it looks because we still have the normal map of the ceiling attached. So let's head back to textures, go to wall 001, hold control, press D and then let's change this to be wall 001 underscore N, change it to a normal map once again. Do you see just how quick this can be? Just going through the motions and getting things how you want. Wall 001, textures, drag and drop the normal map onto there. Perfect. So now we have what would appear to be a wall right there. And it depends how, you know, how high you want this to be, how, you know, tall you want your room to be. But we won't really know how that is going to look exactly right until the next tutorial when we import our player. So that is going to be the plan for the next tutorial. Once we get around to importing our player, we can then change the scale of things correctly and we'll get everything working very, very nicely. So remember, you can get these textures if you go to the pinned comment or the link in the description, download them for free and you can use them in your game. And uh, remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I'll see you in the next one.